and um, welcome to the uh, Davies Use Case webinar being presented by uh, Lanai Community Health Center on uh, the self-measured blood pressure uh, program. This is a Davies award-winning use case for the value of health IT. Uh, my name is Arno Simmons. I'm the manager of quality patient safety, and it's my pleasure to moderate this presentation. Core to the HIMSS mission is promoting the use of health IT to improve the quality of healthcare delivery. HIMSS promotes and advocates uh, the integration of clinical decision support and best practice guidance, access to clinical data to analyze progress, and IT enable patient safety tools for all healthcare organizations, clinicians, patients, and community members as vehicles for improving patient outcomes. The Hems Nicholas E. Davies Award of Excellence is the pinnacle of the Hems Value Recognition Program. The Davies Award recognizes outstanding achievement of organizations from around the world who have utilized health information technology uh, to improve patient outcomes and value. The Davies Award winning use cases have, uh, have been peer reviewed to validate sustainable improved patient and business outcomes resulting from health IT enabled care delivery. So it's my pleasure to welcome our speakers for today's webinar and I'll turn it over to Dr. Humphreys and and let them uh let folks from Lanai help uh introduce themselves. Um thank you Arnold. Yeah this is um Dr. Joe Humphrey, I'm the uh, medical director and the director of quality at Lanai Community Health Center. Um, and with me, I've got Jared uh, Medeiros, uh, who is uh, one of our providers in APRN, uh, as well as Geneva uh, Castro, who is an RN and uh, works uh, both as a, a clinician as well as uh, helping us with IT. Um, By giving you a little background of Lanai Community Health Center, uh, we are a federally qualified health center and we provide um, care to approximately 6% of the island population. Uh, Lanai provides holistic integrated medical care for dental, um, medical, and uh, behavioral health services. Um, our total number of employees is uh, 40. Um, most are full-time and uh, we hire from the community. Uh, the include two full-time nurse practitioners, uh, uh, myself, medical director, who's 25% um, FTE uh, for clinics, two full-time psychologists, and our dental uh, team. And Lanai Community Health Center sees over 2,000 unduplicated patients in a year uh, for 2017. We've been growing. Uh, and approximately uh, 7,500 7, visits. I um, has uh, 3,100 uh, people on the island. Uh, the island has a plantation history. Uh, this is the Pineapple Island, uh, where a large pineapple um, plantation existed until uh, early 2000 or uh, 1990, um, uh, at which time the Dole elected to move pineapple to um, Central America. Um, our population is diverse, uh, mostly Asian, Hawaiian, and Pacific Islanders, and 40% of the population um, is Filipino. Uh, currently, the island has about 30 uh, miles of uh, paved roads. Uh, there's large, extensive uh, dirt and gravel roads uh, across the rest of the uh, island, which used to be plantation. Uh, it does have amazing hiking, gorgeous beaches, and fresh air. And our current primary uh, economic driver is the hotel and hospitality industry. Uh, Self-measured um, blood pressure, uh, I would like to go through um, describing the science behind this um, and then give some background uh, with the device uh, that we use, uh, obviously uh, sharing with you our information system and Probably most importantly, the healthcare delivery system that is behind delivering um, self-measured blood pressure, SMBP. 
Uh, to start with, I'd like to go through this article from 2013 by Mar Margolis uh, et al. Um, showed that you know, using home blood pressure uh, monitoring uh, with a pharmacist in a randomized control trial um, showed double-digit improvement in hypertension um, management uh, over standard care. Uh, was was an editorial that caught my eye, and that basically said that in the, in the uh, JAMA article, a well-designed and well-executed home blood pressure um, uh, telemonitoring and care management program to control hypertension, um, you know, blood pressure control by making hypertension management more like the modern bank, uh, accessible, easy, and convenient. Tension uh, in uh, the U.S. and, and the care of adults. Uh, in this article in 2015, uh, you know, presented in the uh, New England Journal with the Future of Public Health, stated blood pressure control, which can save more lives uh, than any other clinical intervention, is successful in only about half of Americans. Nearly 90 percent uh, controlled hypertension have both health insurance and regular source of care, and more than 80% have multiple contact with the health care system each year. Uh, obviously, a tremendous gap in the delivery of our health care system uh, at this point. You know, one of, um, of home blood pressure monitoring uh, was to look at whether it actually was the value that best predicted cardiovascular um, risk uh, and this article from 2016 uh, clearly indicated morning blood pressures were better predictors of cardiovascular risk than office blood pressures. Yeah, in, in the United States, there's been a, a fairly slow adoption of uh, SMBP. Uh, but however, uh, in November, the AHA and ACC came out with new guidelines for the management of hypertension. And I've got the area that speaks to um, self-measured blood pressures. Uh, they essentially, they state, out-of-office blood pressure measurements are recommended to confirm the diagnosis of hypertension and for the titration of um, blood pressure lowering medications in conjunction with telehealth counseling or clinical intervention. Uh, essentially, this statement moves uh, hypertension management from the office to the home. <clears throat> the real challenge is to be able to do that effectively with the caveat uh, that we are using telemonitoring or um, you know, clinical management um, with the acquisition of um, home blood pressure reading. Of office blood pressures have been recognized uh, for a long time. Uh, this article from 1994 I clearly identifies the problem. Hypertension can be identified only by measuring blood, um, blood pressure. However, conventional detection methods uh, are unreliable for three main reasons. Uh, technically inaccuracies, uh, some of which are avoidable, an inherent variable in blood pressures, and the tendency for blood pressures to increase in the presence of a physician, white coat hypertension. Uh, the AHA ACC guidelines uh, clearly give uh, the methodology for getting office blood pressures, but if those are exercised correctly, it would take 5 to 15 minutes for every patient coming in with hypertension to actually get an accurate blood pressure in the office. This is actually prohibitive for getting accurate ones in the office, and most of us know that office blood pressures um, are problematic. Seeing uh, hypertension, which is not often discussed, but certainly influences office blood pressures, is the circadian rhythm, the fluctuation of blood pressure um, over time in a 24-hour uh, rhythm. Uh, as this uh, 
blood pressure in the morning is the highest and drifts down in the afternoon and is lowest in the uh, evening. Uh, so an office blood pressure taken sometime during the day could be influenced uh, significantly by the time of day rather than the actual um, blood pressure the patient may have on an average. <clears throat> uh, the other question that comes up is whether it would ever be cost effective to do home blood pressure monitoring. Uh, the Japanese in 2008 published this article showing that very clearly the benefits uh, outweighed the uh, um, cost of it and it was indeed cost effective. It was interesting at that time because the uh, American Heart Association also recognized the value of home blood pressure monitoring at that time, um, but actually called to action um, for the use of home blood pressure monitoring to be covered by insurance, which is another uh, significant barrier for moving towards home blood pressure monitoring. Um, so, you know, hopefully that gives you an explanation and indication of where we are as far as moving blood pressure care to the home uh, in the United States. Um, when I started our blood pressure um, program in 2014, and, and this is our data as far as what we currently um, are experiencing, uh, the blue line is our the number of hypertensive patients, and uh, we've seen a, a huge growth in both the number of uh, hypertensive patients as well as the total number of patients we're seeing in the health center. <coughs> the yellow line um, is our experience as far as the percentage controlled, and uh, we were doing very well uh, up until 2015, and then we saw a drop in the number of patients that were controlled. Uh, actually measuring the office blood pressure rather than the home blood pressure. Um, I want to get back to that graph uh, in a little bit, but at the same time I'd like to share where our, our, um, our health information technology actually supports our home blood pressure monitoring program. Um, and this is a picture of our um, HIT system here at Illinois Community Health Center. We um, have electronic health record. We're fully automated with that. Uh, it is e-clinical work. Um, and the, the electronic health records are really a replacement of the pa um, patient's chart and practice management and have real weaknesses um, as far as dealing with other parts of health information technology. Uh, we um, have been using a, a data warehouse, which um, is uh, part of our electronic health record system, uh, and that allows us to do population uh, reporting, decision support, and analytics uh, much more easily than if we were attempting to do it out of ECW. Uh, and then we have our case management um, software, uh, which is cloud-based, uh, and is able to take uh, patient-generated data um, and that is integrated in with the clinical information um, that comes from the electronic um, medical record through our data warehouse. Uh, the data is refreshed every night, uh, and the, the care, care management software is able to um, upload the blood pressure and blood glucose readings from home. Uh, it is also cloud-based, which allows us to share information with our clinical uh, pharmacy, uh, as well as uh, has a patient portal, which uh, can engage patients in looking at their uh, results and other information on our patient portal. Um, yeah, one of the challenges that um, we somewhat failed to appreciate to start with is trying to translate research into um, practice. Uh, we were in touch with uh, the Margolis group and got an, a lot of material from them on how they had set up their uh, research protocols, um, but they had recruited patients who were very willing to do the blood pressure monitoring at home uh, and uh, were highly trained with a budget that was considerably larger than ours. Um, in 2014, we successfully got a one-year grant uh, from CVS Caremark Foundation uh, to implement home blood pressure monitoring. Uh, we did not have um, funding to purchase blood pressure cuffs uh, within that budget, uh, and we firmly believe that we should use off-the-cuff, off-the-cuff, off-the-shelf um, blood pressure uh, monitors to keep the cost down. 
rather than the A and D uh, tele telehealth system that was used in the research protocol, um, the MicroLife blood pressure cuffs that were sold at Costco were the ones that we uh, selected um, primarily because they had uh, the memory stored in an XML file that was easily exportable. Um, as it turned out, uh, as we researched the, the uh, MicroLife uh, blood pressure cuffs, they actually uh, made CVS blood pressure cuffs. Uh, they've got two branded CVS blood pressure cuffs at that time. Um, and uh, they have the same software as the, the uh, Costco one. Uh, we were able to contact uh, a local um, CVS folks, and they worked out being able to discount the blood pressure cuffs from CVS to $35, and we were able to then uh, pass that cost savings on to our patients. Uh, we initially had planned to start small and make sure we worked out the bugs, uh, and it was quite remarkable as we started to talk to patients, they understood that office blood pressures were not accurate, and um, literally first of the first 20, why 18 uh, patients bought blood pressure cuffs and took them home, and the other two, uh, we loaned them to them and came back and purchased it. At that point, in a small community, rather than limiting the number of patients that we had on the program, we elected to offer it to uh, all of our hypertensive pro patients, and we um, pretty much have all of our uh, patients involved in um, S SMBP. Um, yeah, and at the same time, we initiated the ability to have one of our medical assistants and uh, an APRN do uh, home blood pressure uh, readings and uh, treatment, uh, allowing them to pick up the data from the um, blood pressure cuff without having the patients actually come into the office or remember the blood pressure uh, cuffs, which was required to get the data into our uh, information system and share it with the provider. Uh, another challenge that we really have had is our, um, is our timeline uh, and the other things and events happening within uh, the health center. Um, in 2014, we were delayed several months uh, as we worked with CVS to get the discount. That was not a, a simple matter to be able to work out an arrangement where we could get uh, less expensive blood pressure cuts from them. They were able to do that, and about the middle of the year, we initiated the program. Um, the other interesting part was we, with our Medicaid patients, which is significant, um, why we realized that we couldn't charge them $35 um, because the, if it was medically necessary, we'd have to get a denial from Medicaid. Uh, at that time, Medicare and um, private insurances did not pay for blood pressure cuffs. Uh, we submitted um, the request to the Medicaid um, uh, managed care organizations here, and with the data that we provided, they all approved the um, um, purchase of the blood pressure cuff. But when we went to the pharmacy, uh, they were not able to collect because the approval was only for um, a medical device, and the pharmacy could only bill for a pharmacy um, cost, and so they were not able to get reimbursed, and we eventually gave up uh, trying to get reimbursed by Medicaid uh, and are currently giving the Quest patient or the Medicaid patients um, blood pressure cuffs without cost since it would be um, against state law and federal law to charge them for the blood pressure cuff. Uh, yeah, by 2015, we were able to upload the XML um, data into uh, CDMP. Um, by the middle of 2015, uh, CVS said that the grant had run out, and so they stopped being able to discount the blood pressure cuffs for us when we moved back to Costco. Um, and then a major disruption in our overall program was uh, early 2016 when we moved into our new health center and had a whole new uh, system and workflow. Um, and the middle of 2016, we got a second grant from Direct Relief uh, BD, which funded uh, remote monitoring for um, blood glucose readings. Uh, and this was a real advantage because many of our patients with diabetes have hypertension. It made sense to treat our patient instead of treating a disease. Um, and in 2017, um, 
was the initiation of a research project by CMS, the CMS um, Million Hearts Cardiovascular uh, Risk Model uh, Research, and we're on the investigation arm of that, uh, which again focuses on cardiovascular risk and incorporates more than just blood pressure. Um, by middle of 2017, uh, while we introduced the Bluetooth enabled um, SMBG and SMB. BP uh, systems, uh, and towards the end, we are now initiating um, medication management by the pharmacist, uh, and we are also reviewing our SMBP uh, analytics and protocols uh, to improve on that uh, component of the delivery system. Now, I'd like to turn it over to um, Jared Medeiros, who is our APRN, to um, go through um, the changes that we've seen in our practice management system and the impact on taking care of patients. All right. Aloha. Uh, so this slide um, really talks about the, the team-based approach that we brought to this uh, home blood pressure monitoring program. And I really feel this is the, the thing that really strengthened the ability of our patients to recognize how important this was for them and their health. Um, it was really important for us as providers to stress the importance of the patient's involvement in monitoring their blood pressures. And it was very uh, surprising for us as providers that patients were coming to us and they were asking, hey, you know, my friend has this whole blood pressure cuff. How can I get involved with this? And it really uh, helped us see how valuable patients were looking at their blood pressures at home and seeing the impact it could have on the management of their hypertension. And we really focused on making shared decision making with the patient and showing them, you know, what their goals should be for their blood pressures, their average blood pressures that they were getting at home, their medications, and the lifestyle things that we always talk about in the clinic, you know, to really help manage their blood pressures. Uh, we, Geneva and I, we would make home visits um, to patients. And it would be a, an opportunity to provide further education and uh, training, you know, for patients. And we could also capture blood pressure data. And this was a real valuable way to um, kind of break down that barrier of the clinic being the place where we have to provide patient education and, and care and going to the homes of our patients here on the island of Lanai and being able to communicate them with a way that is really culturally appropriate here in Hawaii, uh, where we really uh, build on the aspect of being able to work together to communicate, and in this community, that is uh, very, very important. Um, being able to be there in the home, too, uh, we would have the opportunity to look at their clinical data of the blood pressures and be able to assist me as a provider in okay, is the, are the medications are taking appropriately managing the hypertension. And, you know, all the providers, we would use a standardized treatment protocol. So it didn't matter if a patient saw me or Dr. Humphrey, uh, they would be, we would all be able to know that, you know, the right medications were being prescribed and that we were all making decisions on the same page. And the interpretation of those home blood pressure readings and uh, were all being managed as well by the same protocols as well. And I'll, I'll turn the next slide over to uh, Geneva Castro, who also greatly helped. Aloha. So I'm going to talk about our SMBP workflow. Um, it usually begins with our provider determining who qualifies to be part of the program. Patient is then informed of the benefits and values of doing the self-monitoring of blood pressure at home. And um, a medical assistant or a community health worker will then bring the BP cuff and give the patient our SMBP packet. They teach the patients on how to properly check the blood pressure, the protocols, and how to use the BP machine. And then our MA or CHW will then determine if the patient has a smartphone that can be used to download and upload the BP reading, or if there is a family member who can lend their phones to them, and if appropriate communication device if appropriate communication device is not available, 
Um, LCHC has a tablet that we can use. And then medical assistant or our community health worker will provide teaching for the patient and their support system when appropriate on how to install the app, how to upload the data using the phone, and even create their email address and password if needed. And a follow-up, either a home, community, or office visit is scheduled within one to three weeks. Patients can also give us a call whenever they have a questions or having trouble with the monitoring. The visit may include assisting in the upload of data, health education, care plan, or any concerns that a patient may have regarding his or her health or the SMBP itself. Providers or other members of the healthcare team are then informed of the patient's condition and BP readings or any questions that they might have. And then the frequency of the blood pressure reading and the number of the visits will depend on how well controlled their blood pressures are. And of course, at any time, patients can make appointments with the providers for an office visit to check their BP or for any other problems. And with the help that our patients get from our team, they were able to be aware of their own health status and also family members' involvement is also beneficial. Um, the barriers with regards to technology are also resolved. One example is our patient in her 60s, which at first um, is having a hard time uploading the data, but with the continued assistance from our MA and CHWs, um, she was able to send um, the data by herself prior to her appointment. And then I'll turn it over back to Dr. Humphrey. No, thank you very much, uh, Jared and Geneva. Um, yeah, the the idea of, of using off the cuff, off the cuff, off the shelf um, uh, technology. Um, is an important uh, concept of cost savings uh, and um, you know, the MicroLife blood pressure cuff is certified by the uh, British Hypertension Society which um, uh, evaluates the accuracy and um, technology of blood pressure cuffs. Um, and having a non-proprietary uh, information system has, has been facilitates us to be able to move the data into our um, care, care management system. Um, you know, another asset we have is a, a robust uh, data warehouse uh, that is built and designed for population-based reporting, and we've got, uh, I think, somewhere around 500 uh, different uh, canned uh, reports, but we also fairly easily can uh, report on individual cases um, or individual questions. Uh, we are able to um, identify everyone that has a um, blood pressure cuff um, as we record that in our electronic health record. Um, <clears throat> I, I wanted to look at um, you know, recommendations that come from some national organizations on keeping blood pressure um, readings from the home on a hypertension log, very similar to the, the types of logs that have been kept for years with patients with diabetes. The diabetes literature is, is, um, has recurrent documentation that uh, diabetes logs aren't effective, and the, this article that was recently published on patients with gestational diabetes, uh, diabetes in pregnancy, where there's a, a strong incentive for people to be involved with getting accurate readings, uh, demonstrated that a significant number of women were not able to keep uh, glucose logs in comparison with the memories. Uh, and as we move into the era of um, SMBP, uh, it is really important to realize that we should also have systems to collect the data electronically and avoid um, patient logs as they will not be as accurate as electronic collection. Um, well, the other the other aspect that I think we've really enjoyed is being part of the um, CMS Million Hearts uh, CVD risk model uh, research. This has given us a, a risk model um, calculated for 10 years mortality, morbidity, and this is just a, an indication of the uh, information that adds the risk factors that are modifiable 
uh, and the conditions that might be um, influenced, and it gives us a, a 10 year uh, risk and also gives us uh, information that can lead to decision support to reduce that risk. Uh, hypertension being a major uh, component of that, and with our home, home monitoring program, uh, we very clearly um, have better data than if we were continuing to rely on the office uh, reading. Um, yeah, the CDMP, which is our care management software, um, is able to uh, both give us a table of blood pressures as well as to present it uh, graphically, and this is very helpful not only for the patient to visualize, but also sometimes uh, for making appropriate decisions uh, by the clinician. Um, yeah, we also, within our care management system, have uh, a structured uh, care plan. Uh, we use this on occasion so that we can communicate as uh, team members uh, and um, communicating both to each other as well as having a care plan that would um, be able to be uh, printed and given to the patient. Uh, and. Uh, CDMP also has a dashboard. Um, in the lower left corner are the uh, current laboratory uh, uh, tests. In the right corner are the problem list. And so when we pass this information on to the pharmacy uh, and the pharmacists for doing medication management, not only do they have uh, the record as far as uh, the number of fills and the types of medication, but they also have the clinical information regarding labs and chronic conditions uh, and uh, basic demographics of the patient. Yeah, our current status uh, of hypertension um, patients, uh, our UDS numbers uh, um, this year, and I did it up till um, this presentation, we have 196 uh, uh, unduplicated patients. We actually have uh, registered uh, 245 uh, patients with hypertension. Uh, the number of cups we have um, sold is uh, 150, and each blood pressure cuff is able to uh, record data for two, to two separate patients. Um, we have now moved on to the CVS um, Series 800, which is their Bluetooth-enabled um, uh, blood pressure cuff, and we're uh, slowly switching out the existing blood pressure cuffs with the um, Bluetooth so that we're getting more and more patients with the capacity to send their information in without bringing the blood pressure uh, cuff. Um, I would mention that the initial year, while we had very good success having patients bring the blood pressure cuff in and being able to upload the data, uh, but one of the disadvantages of having patients very knowledgeable is that they also forget their, their cuff in the bar. Uh, and they would often come in and report that their blood pressures were doing very well at home, but we would not get any um, uh, official uploads uh, because they didn't bring the box in. And uh, the Bluetooth looks like it's uh, getting a, a much better um, level of capture of data as we uh, implement this. Uh, and the ease of sending the information in allows us to make a phone call to get somebody to upload if they've um, missed appointments or have had a change of medication and have forgotten to do the uploads. So, uh, that uh, is promising technology we're currently using. Um, yeah, the um, the other fact is that not all the blood pressure cuffs that we sold are still on island, and um, occasionally they end up wandering to uh, other family members or um, to other countries as um, they are, uh, uh, you know, something that is valued and. Uh, and sometimes shared, so we end up uh, having to identify people that might not no longer have their cuff. <clears throat> uh, if looking at, looking at the value equation uh, to start with, um, you know, hypertension in 2011 cost 46 billion dollars in healthcare services, uh, medications, and missed days at work, uh, not not counting the comorbidity. Uh, so doing hypertension fair care more efficiently and more effectively clearly will reduce those costs. Um, and getting back to the accessibility, um, ease, and convenience, uh, uh, hopefully we've clearly established that the um, 
SMVP is a better measure than uh, an occasional office uh, uh, measure. However, the equipment is um, per patient and not all the blood pressure cuffs that are sold um, will potentially be calibrated correctly. So an office visit uh, to compare the home blood pressure uh, cuff to the office um, measure which has been calibrated and generally speaking is maintained as, as the accurate uh, instrument uh, is essential as part of a, a, a home blood pressure monitoring program. Um, yeah, again, the, the off-the-shelf uh, blood pressure cuff makes it um, easily available for patients. Uh, it is essential uh, to have a single blood pressure cuff to be able to do the interface to get the data into the information system uh, unless there's a vendor out there that's willing to um, accept multiple different blood pressure cuffs. It's also easier for our staff to have a single uh, unit that they're very familiar with rather than having to learn how to implement blood pressure management with multiple different cuffs. Uh, it's been um, very effective to use community health workers to improve uh, e-health patient literacy uh, in using the communication technology. Uh, most of our older patients um, are very supportive and actually um, would like to use the technology, but it is sometimes uh, tedious to get the uh, system um, up and running and in place and train our older population. But with the community health workers, we're just seeing a progressive improvement in getting that aspect of the program up and running. Um, and it is also important to understand that contact hours are important for chronic disease management. And the community health workers um, spend more time with the patients than our providers. Uh, we also have the access to Zoom, which is our telehealth platform. And so from a home to office, we actually can Zoom in and do a, a patient consultation while the community health workers in the house um, and do medication adjustment. Uh, recently passed state laws in Hawaii allow us to potentially bill for those services. Uh, one of the advantages and cost savings with uh, SMBP uh, is that a number of patients have been diagnosed as hypertension and are even on medication with good results when they actually don't have hypertension. Office blood pressures, as mentioned, often re reflect um, white coat hypertension and the identif identification of individuals that actually have normal blood pressures reduces the total number of patients uh, with hypertension. Um, it again is emphasized it's a better um, better predictor of cardiovascular risk and thus should be the uh, readings that are used for management of hypertension. Um, generally speaking, the uh, results at home are lower than the, those that are recorded in the office uh, and that allows us to have the right medication um, at the, the right time and generally speaking a reduction in the total amount of medication again with cost savings. Uh, the, um, Management with the community health workers um, really keep us in touch with the patients along with the uh, ability to have them send blood pressure readings in. Uh, we do not have to have that routine every three month or every six month office visit if we know patients are doing well and we can reduce uh, the need for um, the office visit uh, given that we're in more continuous contact with the patient. Uh, and then obviously we have reduced um, cardiovascular mortality and morbidity that will reduce cost. Uh, and the value is also significantly improving the quality of care. The patient en engagement um, significantly improves their knowledge of what a normal blood pressure is and the immediate feedback leads to an improved uh, self-management and lifestyle change. Uh, as I've emphasized before, um, being able to automate the collection of, of the SMBP um, gives us a high level of, of data integrity. Uh, we are able to, to collect serial blood pressures and uh, the consensus is average blood pressures are better than a single blood pressure reading 
Uh, even at home, we can collect it uh, multiple days and multiple uh, times a day. Uh, it looks like the morning blood pressure is the most significant, but uh, it is worthwhile to collect evening blood pressures uh, on occasion. Uh, and we certainly uh, avoid having patients do um, their own logs. Uh, and then the electronic collection of data rather than a log also allows us to do population-based studies. And uh, if done correctly, we might have large databases uh, with self-monitoring blood pressure um, that would give us the ability to do um, analysis and uh, identify certain areas where we could change the healthcare system or improve management. Uh, yeah, we're, we're currently in development of uh, using our computer um, the care management system to do better analytics of the blood pressure. Uh, this is uh, areas that uh, don't have good guidance, but there's, there's efforts to look at taking averages of um, two or more morning readings for three days or more um, to uh, get a better idea of where the um, actual blood pressure is. Uh, the first reading of the morning is sometimes high, and that uh, should be eliminated. It only takes the, the readings after that. Um, and yeah, and that um, it also allows us to, to diagnose hypertension. Yeah, the management, uh, again, takes multiple readings. And then when you get to maintenance, why, um, uh, why we don't need very many readings at at maintenance, uh, we just need to make sure that the uh, there's no change in the status. So only once or twice a month, they with three readings uh, can give us an idea that there's um, uh, adherence to medication management, no change in the uh, actual status of the patient. Uh, the other thing we realized uh, going from uh, research to um, reality. Uh, is that uh, patients don't always follow instructions. And uh, so the patients will often measure blood pressures when they're curious on what their blood pressure is. They also don't have, in a, or don't have adequate um, techniques all the time and will get very low or high, low, very high blood pressures um, based on how they place the cuff. Um, and so we're looking at uh, getting rid of uh, the readings that are two standard deviations off the norm. Um, by averaging blood pressure over a period of three months and then um, you know, eliminating those before we do our analytics, particularly with patients that have a few blood pressure readings, a few abnormal blood pressures can significantly uh, change our interpretation. Uh, and then we also would eliminate um, you know, the readings that are not within the time frame of morning and evening readings. Um, so yeah, the, the the change in the way that we deliver care has been really significant. Um, we certainly believe we are are doing good science. Um, we have um, good evidence, at least um, from our experience, that we've increased um, patient engagement. Uh, we've worked really hard on team-based care, um, and you know and this has all been facilitated by um, using our technology to um, support our team and support our patients and not using technology to actually drive the change. And with that, I'd like to um, uh, have the end pow in Hawaiian, uh, and we appreciate uh, the uh, opportunity to present this webinar. Uh, Kate, so uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Humphrey, and um, and to uh, Lanai Community Health Center for this presentation. Um, I just want to remind folks where to go find uh, this recording and other Davies use case webinars, and also how to apply on, for information on how to apply for Davies Award. Uh, that information can be found posted at the Hims Davies website at hims.org backslash uh, Davies. And um, again, uh, thank you. Uh